So in theory, that should be it. Um, come to the end. There's just a few things to do, um, just to tidy up. First thing is to create this file. I find this extremely useful, especially if I, for example, if I left this system on here and I come back to it in a couple of months time, even probably a couple of weeks time, I'll look at this and think, well, what have I installed here? Is it Debian Gen 2 or is it Linux from scratch? Well, putting that on there, once I found out it's a Linux from scratch installation, this will actually tell me what version has been installed. So if I come here, I can look for this file. Um, and it tells me that it's Linux from scratch because it's Linux from scratch release file is there. And it's version 12.1 and it's a system D version as well. There's these two files which are useful to put on. I think every, as far as I'm aware, nearly every certainly every distribution I've used has got the OS release file so I always tend to look for that if I come across a, a Linux I've installed on a hard disk you know if I'm moving hard disks around or I dig out a machine to use um, I always look for this OS release file and that tells me straight away what um, version what distribution has been used um, so that's a quick go to to find out what um, has been installed. So I just put your name there, just show that I installed it by hand, and likewise for the LSB one as well. And the LSB one is, I think, is actually, is it the LSB one? I think it's the LSB one. It's actually used by a little utility that can be installed in um, BLFS. <coughs> So they're complete. So anytime I come back to this, I boot this, I can look at any of these files. So like I said, normally I'll go to the OS release. It tells me straight away it's Linux from scratch and it even tells me what version I've installed as well without even having to look at LFS release. Okay, so that's that. Uh, get counted. Um, you can go here uh, to register yourself as an FS user, which might be nice for the editors to know how many people have had a go at it. Rebooting the system. Um, there's some things um, you might still want to do uh, to install firmware for any kernel driver that your hardware re requires. You might not know that until you've rebooted. Um, ensure the password is set for the root user. We've already done that. If we can't get in, we'll just have to reboot from a live um, USB again and set it inside a true environment. And you might want to review these files again, which we've already set. Probably don't need to, but um, you might want to review them. Now let's log out from the Troot and unmount the virtual file system. So let's run through these. One at a time. So these are all the virtual file systems that were loaded so that we gained access to the these file systems and certain things that the kernel exposes within the, allowed us to view them within the true environment, otherwise they wouldn't have been available. Okay, I normally get this. I don't know why. Uh, let's try using the minus R option. Okay, it was EFI vars that got mounted. So it did get mounted by something, probably that grub install command that mounted it. So it's unmounted cleanly now, so that's fine. Um, if you remember, we also created subdirectories off the root, so we need to unmount them. So that's boot EFI and boot and then now we can uninstall the actual oh we can't install it because we're actually at it so let's go let's just go home and retry that unmount that should work now no it shouldn't we've still got stuff mounted there um okay that's because we're in here still so let's disappear from there and retry that and that's worked now 
So we've completely unmounted the target drive that we've been building on and we're okay to reboot the system. Assuming the grub loader is set up as outlined earlier, the menu is set to boot LFS 12.1 systemd automatically. When the reboot is complete, the LFS system is ready for use. You'll see a simple login prompt at this time. You can proceed to the LFS book. We can add more software to suit your needs. If it's not successful, it's time to troubleshoot. So um, I'm going to reboot now and check that uh, we can get into the LFS system. Um, and I'll finish the video there and then I'll just do a supplementary video with the additional configuration that needs to be done, um, which doesn't really need to be done technically if we've booted in the system it's working it just finishes off the system properly so that it's working correctly as expected because if you remember it was things to do with the system clock and the Linux console some things we couldn't do and there was some supplementary stuff about setting up the grub to boot using the path option as I remember um, so um, yeah, what I'll do is I'll boot, normally I just do reboot here because I'm on a live CD, it doesn't really matter, everything's in memory, um, and we've unmounted the hard disk, but I'll just um, shut down things cleanly, uh, just do it the proper way, so let's shut that down, let's shut these tabs down, we don't need that anymore, let's just check we've come to the end, yeah, we've done the end of that, we got to the end of the book, let's just quickly check. Yeah, some more information there about hints and maintenance um, and some things what you can do if you want to take LFS further. Um, I do occasionally um, do videos on BLFS, but I don't do it very often because it's very onerous. It takes a great deal of time of my time to prepare for it and to actually do it, to record it, to generate the videos and so on. Um, it can take most of well it certainly takes more than a month to do normally about five or six weeks of my of full time working creating the videos so I don't normally do them that often I did do one recently for version 12.0 so if you want some indicators on how to build stuff for uh, Beyond Linux from Scratch and how to get from Linux from Scratch to Beyond Linux from Scratch because it can be a bit, um, bit involved in getting into that situation um, yeah, follow those videos for version 12.0, um, but I almost certainly will not be doing BLFS for 12.1. Um, and then the rest of the book is just appendices, but let's finish this now and get this rebooted and keep our fingers crossed that it will boot the first time. Okay, so I'm waiting for it to reboot now. I've removed the USB drive. And it's taking... Right, okay, so there's the prompt, uh, the menu, sorry, just wait for it to boot. And... Okay, it's not found. Oh, I know what I've done. I've put the... Yes, yeah, so I've specified partition four for where it's to find the uh, kernel files, and that's incorrect. It should be partition one because it's a separate boot partition. So what I need to do is uh, I've pressed C there to get a command prompt up. I'm going to type in set root equals um, bracket hd zero comma one. And then I'm going to press escape to go back to the menu and then press enter to boot that. Yes, it's booting now. And we've got one problem with the console setup, but then that wasn't complete, so that's okay. Um, and that's probably why we're getting kernel messages printed up on the screen after the login prompt has come up. So if you can see, if I put my cursor over, there's the login prompt, but all these kernel messages have appeared. And that's because the console hasn't been completely set up properly. But at least we've booted. If I press enter, you can see we've got a command prompt. 
So what I'm going to do is attempt to log in. And yes, we've got a prompt, so we're in. So the first thing I'm going to do is to modify the grub config file to point to the correct partition. So I'm going to do mount forward slash boot. And it says it's been mounted. So now I should be able to do mount uh, vi forward slash boot forward slash grub forward slash grub dot cfg. And yes, I need to change this to partition one because that's the partition where the uh, boot partition resides, where all the kernel files are on the, the grub files. So that was wrong. That's the root of the um, grub system files and the kernel files. So if I say, oops. Put that back in, save that, and come out and do control or delete to reboot. This time it should boot immediately into Linux from scratch. And immediately we've got the proper resolution that's been set up as well now. So it's obviously found, the grub has found its files in the correct place and it's booted a lot better as well. The uh, you could see the messages coming up straight away. So we've still got the kernel messages coming up. Um, but what I should do is do that in a separate video. Um, if all you're interested in was getting Linux from scratch up and running, we've achieved that. Um, as you can see, we've got a prompt. We can log in. And you know, in theory, we don't need to go any further. Um, what we'll do is try to ping the network and yes it's pinging my network server so that's or my name server rather so that's working fine um, let's try pinging something outside of my network so if I do Linux from scratch.org uh, for some reason that's not working so there may be some more configuration to do network wise So maybe the DNS resolution is not working properly. Um, yeah, the name server has come up completely wrong. So that needs to be changed. But at least the IP address, uh, the um, sorry, the network card name is correct ENP 0 S 3 1 F 6 um, so it's nearly there um, but yeah apart from that everything else is working we can go into sources see all our files there we could for example if we wanted to um, recompile some stuff in fact one thing I will do I've just remembered is the Python tests um, because I left Python running Oh, sorry, the Python sources. So I'm going to change into that. And just get up on another terminal, the Python page. Uh, one system D. Right, where is it? Python. There it is. So I did everything except for test this. So I'll run this now and see what the tests are like, see if they're any better than usual. Usually they don't really work very well. Um, so all I need to do is make tests. So I'll just time this. So there it is started. Um, actually, I've just realized I'll stop that. Um, there's no make flags. So what I'm going to do is change that. And in theory, this should be added to the, in fact, what I'll do is just run make test with 
minus J16. Um, yeah, setting that make flags should be set really in the profile somewhere so that it's set always. Um, but for now, just get this tested. Yeah, I can hear the fans come on. It's running on all the cores. So this shouldn't take too long. So it looks like it's doing some connection tests there and they failed. Uh, probably because the network's not completely working correctly. So it looks like they're still running yet. It's run so. Let's have a look. We've got two failures. And looks like they were to do with networking. Oh, six tests failed again. 25 was skipped. Yes, failed as six. Uh, let's see what it says about the test. It doesn't say much about the test at all. Um, so what I'm going to do is leave this video as it is. And the next video, the last video, is just like an additional video. I'll try and carry on and do the correct configuration um, for the networking and I think it was the networking. Let's just double check. Oh, the system clock, the Linux console and Grub. Maybe there wasn't any more networking to do, but I'll have to look into that to see if there is anything else that can be done now because we couldn't do a lot of the stuff with the system D inside the true environment. and. If there is any changes I've done to the network, I'll rerun these tests to see if there is any improvement. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I think that's fairly successful. That you know, Linux from scratch has been built, albeit with a few changes to be done. So uh, if that's okay for you, thank you very much for watching. Um, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video videos, if you found them useful. And if you're sticking around for the supplementary video, I'll see you there. Thank you. Goodbye.